What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender new feature video for you. In today's video, we're gonna check out the new asset library feature that's in development as a part of the Blender 2.92 Alpha. So I think this is gonna be a really great feature because I think Blender's needed something for a while where you could save things like materials and models and other things like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so as always, this is an experimental build, meaning you shouldn't be using it for production work. Um, so you can find this, though, by going to blender.org, go into the download Blender option, and then you want to go down into the experimental section, and you want to click on download Blender experimental. And then from there, you don't even want to download this one. You want to go over into the experimental branches. So these are different branches of Blender where they're testing different uh, features. And so for this one, for example, what I want to do is I want to go down and I want to look at the asset browser branch. So this is the one that I'm playing around with. And uh, this is the one where they're this is the one where you can test drive that asset browser. So you can click on this in order to download it. And so once you download it, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open up this version of Blender. And so again, remember this is a little bit unstable right now, but um, it gives you a pretty good idea of what they're doing. So you can find this by clicking the little drop down here in your editor type, and you wanna select the option for asset browser. So I'm gonna click here, move my mouse over to the asset browser option. So when I click on that, we can make this a little bit bigger in this window right here. But you can see how you have this new function or this new window in here um, that's got different sections for different things, right? Things like scenes and animations and objects and collections, um, geometry, shading, images, all these different things over on the left-hand side. And you'll notice that this is empty for right now because we haven't actually added anything into our asset browser. And so this is where we're going to be able to browse. And so what this is going to do is this is going to allow us to save and access objects inside of a library. For this video, we're going to focus specifically on objects objects and materials. Um, if you guys are interested, we could get a little further into this. I want to give them time to kind of develop it a little bit more before we go way in depth though. So from its simplest form though, what you can do is you can take objects like this cube, you can right click on them over here in your outliner, and there's an option down below for ID data. Well, in this build of Blender, there's an option here for make asset. So when you click on make asset, what that's gonna do is that's gonna save a copy of this inside of your asset library. And it's gonna show up in the objects and collections section. Well now, what I can do is I can click and drag this into my model. So I can take this cube and I can add it into my model pretty much anywhere. So you can use this in order to store different models. So let's say for example that we were to create like a, not a circle, but let's do a UV sphere. And we'll just move it right here. And so let's say we wanted to add this sphere. All we have to do is right click, ID data, make asset. And so now I have a cube in here that I can bring in. I also have a sphere in here that I can bring in. And so I'm not really sure what's going on with the preview images right here. This one kind of jumped and changed into something else and it's not showing us a preview anymore. That may just be something that uh, that's not working 100% right in this build. But you can see how having the ability to save these asset libraries could be super valuable. And so one thing I want to note about this right now is currently these are living in your current file. So if you click in this drop down right here, for example, you can see how this gives you the options for either custom or current file. So that means that if you were to open up another window, these wouldn't show up in here because they're living in this file. And so theoretically, the idea is that you're going to be able to not only save assets in this file, but also in your preferences, set asset repositories in here here. So within the asset repositories, you would have either like blend files or something like that, that you could then access down below. So you can see how I've added um, under the file paths, I've added a primitives um, folder in there. And you can see how that shows up in this little drop down right here. But as of right now, I haven't been able to get anything to show up. So I'm not sure if that's because I'm doing something wrong or because they haven't developed it quite that far. But just know that I think that's kind of the end game is for you to be able to set different folders. So for example, up here, 
there would be the option for maybe like furniture or something like that. You could add like multiple different asset repositories in here. So I think that's kind of the long game in here. It doesn't seem to be working yet um, unless I'm doing something wrong. So if you guys have gotten it working, leave a comment down below and let me know. But um, for right now, you can see how you can save these assets in your current file. And so in addition, let's say that we wanted to save some materials. Right? So to start off, let's say we created a very simple material. And so let's jump into viewport or material preview mode. And let's say that we were to add a material in here. So I'm just gonna click the plus button. We're gonna call this new material um, blue. So we'll just call it blue. We'll just give it a blue color, right? So I'm just gonna click in here, drag this over to blue. Delete this guy out. And so now we've got a blue color right? Well, what we can do is inside of the active material index, you can right click on this and there's an option to make asset as well. So what that's going to do is that's going to take that object and it's going to put it in here um, under your shading section. So what that allows you to do is that allows you to drag this in and place it on an object. And so let's say we had a more complex material. And so let's say we were to add a material like maybe a brick material. So we'll just create something simple right here. I'll just drag or maybe a stone material. Let's we'll drag this in here. And then for this object, we now have a brick material. We could just call our stone material. We'll just call it stone. And then for this object, we want this one to be the stone material. So now let's say that we have this stone material. We could right click on that and we can click on make asset for that one as well. So you can see how now I can drag in materials on top of objects and it'll place those materials um, from my asset library. So I'll be following the development on this one pretty closely because I think this is one of the big things that Blender needs is a way to kind of store all of your assets so you don't have to go back and remake things and re-import things over and over again. So I think this is going to be a really good feature long term. But if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.